What is wool? You're probably like, Professor Johnson, did you really <laughs> make a lecture called What is Wool? I know what wool is. <laughs> I'm sure you do. But what we're going to talk about in this lecture is we're going to talk a little bit about the history of wool, um, when humans started using it and how they uh, got into wool production. We're also going to talk about the science. So we're going to get the what is wool made of. And that's the piece you probably don't know. What is wool? So this part you do know, right? So wool is a fiber that forms on the covering of sheep. So basically it's sheep hair, right? That's what it is. But it's a fiber with a history and Stone Age people were known to uh, skin the sheep and wear the, the, full, the full skin. But by the time we get to, um, we get to Rome, we were wearing, wool was being produced as a textile. By the time we get to Greece and Rome, there actually are in, in the mythology of these two these two civilizations, there are goddesses that are attached to the spinning and weaving of wool. So Athena in Greek times and Minerva in Rome were both credited <laughs> with uh, with the production of wool, of being able to shear the sheep, spin the wool, and weave it into a textile. So what is wool made of? Like I said, wool is, is, is essentially sheep hair. And in the, the fiber, the textile fiber world, this is what's called a natural protein fiber, right? So we talked about uh, natural fibers. So this is actually a natural protein fiber. And all that means that it is of an animal origin. So it's the hair or fur of an animal. And conversely, when we get to silk, silk is the production of a caterpillar. So I'll say it, I'll say it a few times, but wool is, is mainly complo- composed of protein. So similar to human hair and it's a medium weight fiber. Um, it essentially comes in, you know, cream or brown or black color because those are the color of, of sheep hair. Uh, and it does have a natural crimp. We've talked about crimp. Um, it has a fiber length between one and 18 inches. And when we view it under a microscope, it has a round shape. Protein fibers are composed of, this is the science, composed of amino acids that have been formed in nature into, you know, chains that have high rates of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. When we're talking about natural protein fibers, we're essentially talking about wools and silks, and they're compared to each other because they have a lot of uh, properties in common, but they do have some differences. And the thing that's most important for wool is that the protein in wool is made made of keratin. And we know that because we have it in our hair. And, uh, you know, that chemical composition allows wool to be more resilient, resist wrinkling, be comfortable to wear, but requires more upkeep. Protein fibers have some common properties because of their similar chemical composition. And the greatest one is that these fibers absorb moisture without feeling wet, uh, which is known as being hygroscopic. And this phenomenon explains why items made from this fiber are really comfortable to use, um, basically because it minimizes sudden temperature changes at the skin if the fiber or the garment has become wet. So what this means is in the winter, when people may go from, you know, indoor where it's it's dry into damp, uh, outdoor cold air, wool absorbs that moisture and and generates heat. So it insulates us from the cold. And, um, you know, lighter weight, loose fitting wools are increasingly wore year round just for that characteristic. Some of the other favorable properties of wool, um, which we have said before, is is that it has it has good resiliency. So, wrinkle comes out uh, if the garment is hung in a, in a moist atmosphere, right? Um, it has a good hand. We talked about hand, right? It feels uh, fair to excellent. We we'll talk about that in our activity, um, and it has good drape and and elasticity. Wool has you know very little problem with static. And um, it's, it makes warm fabric for, for two reasons. First, it just you know takes moisture away um, without leaving your garment um, feeling damp. It also has a chemical reaction that releases energy in the form of heat. So there's actually some chemistry underneath your garment that's keeping you warm. 
So we talked about some of the favorable properties of wool. Let's let's talk about the the unfavorable. Um, one of the most unfavorable uh, things with wool is that it's it's not easy to care for. It's not something you can you can wash and dry um, because it's a hair, right? Yeah, you wash it and it shrinks. Um, believe it or not. So as a result, um, you know, wool garments traditionally need to be dry cleaned. And part of the reason why they why they need to be dry cleaned is that um, in the presence of heat and moisture combined in just the washing process, because it's a hair, it mats, right? So we, we call it pilling on a, on a garment when we get those little tiny balls that, that are can't be brushed or, or cut off. Um, so that is one of the negative properties of wool is that it does pill horribly. So the other unfavorable property of, of wool is that it's it's vulnerable to moth. So as a protein, it is something that that moths eat. So, you know, wool garments have to be treated and stored in a specific manner so they don't um, become dinner <laughs> for the moths or that you, you don't lose your garment to a moth infestation. As a result of these you know, favorable and unfavorable properties. You know, wool is an expensive fiber to uh, use to make a textile and ultimately, ultimately a, a garment. So due to these limit, limited uh, quantities of favorable properties and the equally unfavorable properties, it is, there is a, a, a luxury tax that's, that's pretty much uh, included in it, it that cost is associated with this production. There are approximately 40 different breeds of sheep that produces about 200 types of wool in uh, wool fiber in varying grades. So, you know, there are some well-known um, breeds of sheep raised in the United States. Um, one we, we know is Merino. That's kind of a word that you, you probably know Merino wool. Uh, and there is a grading process and judging of, of the fiber for fineness and length. So where is it produced, right? The leading producers of apparel wool, right? So wool that we use it for apparel include Australia, New England, South Africa, United States, and China. And the leading producers of wool that are used for, for home goods, um, so carpet class wool, yes, there is wool carpet, um, is uh, China, Argentina, and Turkey. The best quality wool comes from the back sides and the shoulder and the poorest quality comes from, from the lower leg. So there is a grading of wool um, that depends on the breed and the health of the sheep and the climate. And the thinner uh, the fiber diameter, that cross section, right? The thinner we talk about cross section, uh, the thinner that is and the more crimp it has are considered better qualities. So what are some of the end uses, right? The, in, the, the principal end uses of, of wool include luxury items, right? So um, since it is a bulkier fabric, it's overcoats and suits, um, luxury upholstery, felt fabric, but most often wool is used, it's knitted into, um, into yarns that produce the most amazing comfortable sweaters. All right, so you got an introduction of, of, of what wool is, and moving forward, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more about the physical, the chemical composition of wool. We're going to talk about the production, the types and kinds of wool. Uh, we also will talk about sustainability, which is really, really important. And um, then, of course, we'll look at some specialty, some uses of wool, and some specialty wools.